eight NFL hopefuls got the call from the Dallas Cowboys during the 2023 NFL Draft. And of those eight incoming Cowboys rookies, four are offensive players and four are defensive players. So Mike Fisher, which do you think could be an instant impact for this team? Well, first of all, it's funny that you point out the four and four because there's this public perception that Dan Quinn ran the drafts and got everything he wanted. <laughs> and it sounds to me like it was four and four. Pretty balanced. Um, th that's just not the way it works in this building. The, the coordinators and the coaches all have big voices. That's always been the case. That goes all the way back to Jimmy Johnson and continues through Dave Campo. And Cowboy fans know Rod Marinelli had a big voice in this building, of course. <laughs> And now Dan Quinn does too. But Dan Quinn does not get to march into the war room and override Will McClay or Mike McCarthy or Jerry Jones, not even uh, with the credential that he has that maybe he's the next head coach of the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. someday. So that mythology needs to go. Yeah. Uh, but he did get his way, or the defense got its way, uh, on the guy in Mozzie Smith who is the answer to right. your question. Uh, and I don't even think it's close. <laughs> it, it, there's a kind of a secret video now that's come out of the war room uh, here in the building where they were debating between Matthew Bergeron, the offensive lineman, yeah. who wasn't on very many people's radar, and then Mozzie Smith. I like how you added that French accent. Yeah, I've that got a little good. bit. Yeah. I got a little bit of something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, and the argument that Will McClay made in the draft room is, We've, we've invested a lot in offensive linemen yeah. up high. It's very rare that we have found this quality of run-stopping guy yeah. that we're willing to put this high a grade on. Let's grab the rare guy. So they will they will absolutely want, need, demand right. Mozzie Smith to be a top of the rotation player. And I think he's the only guy in this group that you could really say that about. When it comes to Mozzie, Mozzie Smith, the defensive tackle out of Michigan, the Cowboys first round draft pick, what is it that you like about him? First of all, uh, you got to make sure that you don't think it's Ozzie Smith. You got to make, for, for if you're an Ozzie. old baseball fan, no relation, I don't believe, between <laughs> Mozzie and Ozzie. It's a great uh, name. Yeah, his, his teammate. The uh, third Smith on the Cowboys, though. Right, you can't have enough. Oh my gosh. Uh, the Smiths are catching up with the Joneses <laughs> in the building. Uh, uh, the, the first thing that does pop out is you, is you see him in a room. And he fills up the room. Uh, and it was uh, Luke Schoonmacher, the tight end, who played with him at Michigan, who's also a cowboy now, who says he's got the broadest shoulders of any man I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, and so that's a start. Yeah. And then uh, Smith, the kid, says his mom used to joke that he must have done push-ups in the womb because even when he was a baby, <laughs> he was strong. But this is a space-eating guy, yeah. and there's athleticism in there, too. A lot of times you'll get that 330-pound guy, mm -hmm. and it's just his job to just stand there and occupy space. In this guy's case, and I'm not saying he's gonna play three technique, but he's got athleticism. At the NFL Draft uh, Scouting Combine, he was ranked as the second most athletic wow. uh, of the guys who play his position. So yeah. he, he has a chance to do something right away, uh, and the demand will be on him to do something right away. You know, in Osa, they do have a playmaker yeah. at three technique, and then in Jonathan Hankins, who they resigned, they have a run stopper. So uh, that's big help up top. Mm -hmm. I love to hear that Osa immediately reached out to Mozzie as well. And then during Mozzie's uh, introductory press conference, the morning after he gets drafted, he came across so humble. You could tell that this is going to be a good addition to the Cowboys locker room in addition to their um, being on the field. Yeah, he has some academic credentials. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's always helpful. This team does like that. This team likes yeah. guys that were team captains and likes guys that uh, have do more than just play football. And, and uh, they are certainly like guys who play in front of 100,000 people on Saturdays. So <laughs> and that's a Will McClay push. Right. And you see that to some degree in this draft as right. well. That does make sense because it's all eyes on the Cowboys no all question. the time. Um, and, and speaking of all eyes on the Cowboys and all bodies in the Cowboys, they, they did two advantageous things this weekend. Um, and, and to some degree, even before the draft, too, because Dallas is Dallas, with all due respect to Denver or Cleveland or Green Bay, th this is football country. Uh -huh. And so in the offseason, players on other teams live here, stay here, work out here, as we saw with DeAndre Hopkins and many, many others. Right. Um, you, you see B. John Robinson, who has no cowboy connection whatsoever, except the reason he didn't take visits, official visits, is because he could just walk into the star all by himself. <laughs> he didn't need an official visit. Right. Well, when the offensive lineman Smith gets here, he's walking down the hallway, and the first thing he does, he bumps into Cowboys. Right. Well, what are they doing here on a random uh, Sunday or Saturday? Well, because every, because players here out. live here. Right. And um, it's, an, it's an advantage that the Cowboys have, and they use, and they really used it in UDFA, and they always do. 
Uh, this goes all the way back to Cliff Harris and Drew Pearson, but certainly in more recent years. You get Jerry Jones on the phone with some kid who didn't get drafted, yeah. who's, who's disappointed for the moment. Right. And Jerry says, ah, <laughs> ah, we sure like to see you with that star on the side of your helmet. Yeah. And we'll pay you something right. too. Um, like all these teams are, are bidding on all these kids. The Cowboys feel like, I think the number last time I checked was up to 13. Mm -hmm. they, they have, of those 13 guys, there's a bunch of them yeah. that like Dane Brugler and other media scouts considered draftable. So in a lot of ways, the Cowboys didn't just have their eight. Mm -hmm. They had an eighth round pick and a ninth round pick right. and a tenth round pick and a twelfth round pick in part because they used the muscle of America's team. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like then the Cowboys achieved their goals when it came to the 2023 NFL draft? Well, it's always, and I've been doing this for 40 years, and we can oversee uh, 32 teams. So do the math. That's a lot of them. Is there a team that, that comes out in its press conference the day after and says, well, I'll tell you what, we blew it. We did not like our draft this year. <laughs> we had this list of five things that we wanted to do, and we didn't accomplish any of them. Right. The Cowboys would have liked to have bumped into a kicker here, mm -hmm. but the two good kickers went too high. Uh, they absolutely would have liked to have bumped into a quarterback uh, prospect late in the draft, mm -hmm. and all those guys went away really as well. Right. So in those two senses, they didn't accomplish everything they want. I like to think that no matter where you draft and no matter how good your roster is, you got to come out of this thing with two starters. I mean, that, that would be good. Right. Um, and they did. Well, if the two Michigans mm -hmm. are starters, and this takes us to Schoon, yeah. if you're going to use a second round pick on a tight end, yeah. he better be better than the tight ends you have. This can't be just, oh, we got now we got three, three <laughs> decent tight ends. That, right. that would have been a, you don't need another decent tight end. Yeah. You need somebody better than Fergushaw. So, he had better be that. Yeah. So Stephen comes out and says, we, we touched all the bases. No, you didn't. Uh, we're all fired up about the draft. Yes, you are. Um, we came away almost with what we wanted. That's what he said, and almost is a key word. Yeah. So um, I, what I like to do, I don't really bother grading the picks because frankly, if you played at Notre Dame, I've heard of you, and then I probably give you a better grade because I've heard of you. <laughs> so I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not a scout, I'm not a coach, and I'm not a player. But I do like to grade the Cowboys' plan. Yeah. And if they're telling the truth about Mozzie being a top 14 guy, right. and they got him at 26, that's the execution of a plan up top. Mm -hmm. The NFL will release their schedule on May 11th, and I know there's a lot of people that are excited for that, including me. I could guess that the New York Jets might have some more primetime games than they're used to. Yeah. What are you looking forward to with the schedule release? So the Jets haven't played on NBC, which is Sunday Night Football, yeah. in 13 years. Wow. It's New York. <laughs> That's nice. And they don't they won't put them on. I, I think, think this will be the year that ends. I believe so. <laughs> uh, in fact, I think the infamous butt fumble thing might yeah. have been the last time that they allowed them Wow. Uh, to be seen at that high profile thing. But yeah, you combine Aaron Rodgers, the New York market, and the Dallas Cowboys into one bundle. Yeah. And all these networks are, I promise you, all of them are saying, listen, I'll give you, I'll give you five other games. <laughs> I want that one. Yeah. Uh, that, that's clearly in the entire NFL, the central game. But you're right, Cowboy Nation uh, and fans, of course, all across uh, the nation yeah. you, for your team, you're waiting for May 11th or so. Oh, yeah. You want to see, because you plan your vacations, mm -hmm. right. you plan your life, you uh -huh. plan your weekends, and the same with us. Yeah. Our, our travel plans are all about, oh, yeah, you get to go to San Francisco <laughs> this year, that kind of right. thing. So um, uh, Dick Mata, the old uh, Dallas Mavericks coach, when the schedule would come out in the NBA, uh, coach, what do you think of the schedule? And he'd say, well, it looks to me like, we got 41 home games and 41 road games. Ha 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 ha. That, that's still kind of the case, except right. it's an odd number now. Yeah. Um, but the, who we play and when we play them, um, that, is, that is a pivotal part of the NFL season, including stuff like mm -hmm. how cold is it going to be when the Cowboys go to Washington, right. Philadelphia, yeah, these are all very important and things. New York. All very important. You'll notice, I mean, that's a habit now. Yeah. The Cowboys play on the road late, Philadelphia, Washington. It's not a punishment. It's a reward if you get to go win. <laughs>